Um, Dr. David Doughty is an Associate Professor of Epidemiology at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. His research focuses on implementation science, transmission modeling, and economic evaluation of TB interventions, especially diagnostics and case finding. He practices general internal medicine in urban East Baltimore and collaborates with field researchers in a number of countries. Hi, is that my cue? <laughs> um, can you guys hear me all right? Yes? Yeah? Is that a yes? Okay, perfect, great, thanks. Um, well, thanks so much. Uh, I, I really appreciate the uh, the opportunity to speak here. Thanks to the organizers. I, I wish that I could be there. Not only is, uh, is Denver a beautiful city, but uh, this is one of my, my favorite meetings, and I, I always feel very uh, <clears throat> Closely connected to those of you who are who are really working to to fight TB on the ground. Um, so I'm I'm sorry I couldn't make it. They uh, the school here asked me to, to teach every now and then, and, and it makes it hard for me to be there. So, but uh, I'm excited to be here today, and um, very much looking forward to, to talking to you about um, epidemiological modeling of TB elimination. Um, <clears throat> I feel like any time there's uh, the word modeling in a uh, talk, people start to worry this is going to be like some like deeply mathematical speech or something like that. And I don't want this to be. I want this to be something that uh, that talks about the potential role of modeling, but also what models have uh, have taught us about the uh, the TB elimination uh, agenda. Um, so. What I hope to cover over the next uh, 20 minutes or so is, first of all, to, to describe the role of modeling in um, exploring strategies for TB elimination um, in high, but in, in particularly in low burden context, uh, knowing that, uh, that Knut has talked about the high burden context already. Talk about why it's hard to do this, um, specifically that reactivation is a, a major driver of TB transmission. Uh, as is migration and mixing uh, and, and outbreaks, and that these are, are difficult things to evaluate in the context of our standard modeling frameworks. Uh, and then also to give you an idea of what some modeling studies have, have done to uh, describe TB elimination. Um, Okay, there we go. So uh, Knut already brought up to you what we mean when we're talking about TB elimination. Uh, I mentioned that there is a, an action framework that I'm, I'm sure others will go into in more detail, but we're talking about getting to less than one case per million per year, um, which is a, a very ambitious target. And I think that it's, it's worthwhile for us to think about what this actually means um, in terms of uh, real numbers, right? So how close are we? In the US in 2014, there were over 9,000 cases. And we're talking about getting to 320 cases per year, right? So one case for every 1 million uh, Americans. And in Canada, we'd be obviously talking about even fewer. So to get there, we have to prevent from even occurring 29 out of every 30 TB cases that currently occur. And this is the same situation as, as Knut just showed you, that the US is one of the, the lowest incidence countries in the world. So, so there aren't too many countries that are closer than this. Um, so so how, how are we going to do this? And what does that actually mean? So uh, in thinking about that, I think it's worth considering <coughs> that uh, this last year, TB incidents fell, in the U.S. at least, by 2.2%. Um, and for those of you who are interested, I'm, I'm happy to talk more offline about the fact that I feel pretty strongly that we're going to see a, a leveling off in our declines in TB incidents. I, I don't think that what we have seen over the past 10 years, unless we do something new and different, I don't think we're just going to be able to see ongoing declines of five, six, seven percent per year. Uh, and I think there are good reasons why that might not happen. But if, if we continue to, to see TB decline at 2.2 percent per year, we'll get to elimination by the year 2170. Right? And um, 
to me, uh, I, I often think in terms of, uh, of my daughter's lifespan, right? And if we're talking about something that is not achievable in, in her lifespan, then um, I feel like we are, are not being ambitious enough. So I, I would like to see us um, think about what will it actually take to, uh, to get to elimination in a time period that's not ridiculously far in the future. Or if that's not possible, um, how do we need to reconsider what we're doing? Um, consider that two thirds of all cases in the foreign born, or two thirds of all cases occur in the foreign born. This is true in, in most low incidence countries, um, and that that those uh, that incidence is not declining at all, right? So if we could in the U.S. prevent every single case except for those who arrived in the past year, um, given our current screening practices, we'd still be twice at elimination. So uh, getting to less than one per million is a, is a huge order, right? Uh, and, and finally, the best estimates of, of how much TB in, in the U.S. reflects recent transmission, I would say is 5 to 15, maybe up to 20 percent, right? But uh, so if we were to completely interrupt all TB transmission within U.S. borders, we would be preventing uh, two to four out of those 30 cases. We have to prevent 29 to eliminate TB. So again, a very tall order, and I think it's worth us thinking about what we really mean when we say we want to eliminate TB as a goal in this country. So <clears throat> transmission models of TB uh, are a commonly used tool to, to help evaluate the potential impact of TB interventions and to help understand some of the dynamics of TB transmission. And what these models do, as is shown uh, at the, on the top part of the slide, is break up your population into different groups. And I've shown a very simple representation here where you say people may be susceptible, recently infected, remotely infected, people with active TB, people who have been successfully treated. And we can watch how the, the sizes of these different boxes changes over time. And the key here is that we want to believe that if we reduce the number of people who have active TB, we also reduce the incidence of TB, the rate of infection. And so these sorts of transmission models capture dynamics that we, we can't see just purely in statistical extrapolations of current trends, particularly, again, if we can achieve more impact than we might expect by reducing the number of people with active TB. Um, so uh, just a very quick example of what uh, a TB transmission model might show. This is an example from uh, Leith Abu Radad and, and colleagues at the University of Washington um, back in 2009 looking at, uh, at the benefits of different interventions for TB, so vaccines, drugs, diagnostics. And what, what they did and what most of these models do is, first of all, choose a population that you want to look at. Second describe the likely effects of new interventions. So for example, you might say we're interested in looking at what the impact of a new diagnostic test might be if that test could shorten time to treatment by three to four months. And so we need to make either assumptions or collect data as to what those direct effects of interventions might be um, if we want to project their impact in these transmission models. And then we can project the impact of TB incidence mortality over time. I don't want to suggest that this is all that we use TB transmission models for, right? We often use them to help us understand more of what's going on in, in those uh, transmission settings. But, uh, but one uh, use of these models is to help project the impact of interventions over time. And, and I want to talk specifically about that application uh, to the elimination of TB in, uh, in particularly in low incidence um, settings. But I, I want to, to do that by way of describing three big challenges in modeling TB elimination, but I think these reflect challenges in achieving TB elimination, right? So first of all is that the key to elimination is not ongoing transmission. We'll talk about this in just a second, but if we do everything we can to prevent ongoing transmission within the borders of a low incidence setting like the U.S., we're not going to get very close to elimination. So we have to think about doing more. 
Second of all, migration is, is often key to driving these dynamics. And then third, as the incident of TB declines over time, outbreaks and local effects, things that are not easy to model, things that are not easy to deal with by some sort of global strategy become much more important. So first of all, talking about um, the role of, of transmission and transmission modeling for that matter in looking at elimination of TB. So I'm going to go through very briefly three existing models of TB elimination that I'm aware of. I'm sure there are more, but, uh, but these are three relatively recent ones. One looking at TB trends in the US, one globally, and one this, uh, this interesting model of, of mass TB treatment of an entire population. This is treatment for active TB. All three of these models, though, agree on one thing, which is that if we are to achieve elimination in any sort of reasonable frame, and again, to me, reasonable means by the time uh, my daughter is still around, uh, we're going to have to think about preventive therapy and not just small doses of preventive therapy, but really preventive therapy on a massive scale, right? Um, so arguably, we don't even need transmission models to, to look at this because uh, the transmission component is actually relatively small. Um, but the, the flip side of this is also that if we're going to, to get here, if we're going to incorporate the, the levels of preventive therapy that we would need to achieve elimination, we're ultimately probably going to have to get to treating people. And an example in the U.S. might be uh, the, the elderly foreign-born for whom the risks of treatment outweigh the benefits. So we have to tell them, we are going to give you a therapy that has more probability of causing you harm than good in order to achieve this, uh, this broader agenda, similarly to what we often do with, for example, vaccines. And so I think it's worth thinking about whether this is uh, what we want to be advocating for, and if so, how do we go about advocating for this agenda? Um, so the first model that I, I want to briefly present is that put together by Andrew Hill, uh, Ken Castro and colleagues looking at modeling uh, elimination of TB in the United States. And on the upper or the, the middle panel of this, uh, this slide, I've shown what they estimated the impact of completely and immediately interrupting transmission of TB within U.S. borders would be on TB incidence on the y-axis. Um, the, the upper set of lines is the foreign-born, the middle set of lines is the entire population, and the bottom set of lines is the U.S.-born. And what you can see is that complete interruption of transmission within U.S. borders, so doing perfect contact investigation in terms of uh, getting recent contacts um, not to, to reactivate, if you will, um, that complete interruption of transmission really doesn't uh, get us even close to elimination, which is that, that bottom dotted line down at one per million per year. And that even if we were to treat 17% of the entire population of the United States that has latent TB infection and do that every single year, so 17% and then 17% of the remaining 83%, et cetera, et cetera, we still um, would be far above elimination. Um, so it, just to, to point to the, the scope of what we are talking about doing if we're trying to eliminate TB in the United States. Uh, this slide shows results from a similar exercise that was carried out by Chris Dye and colleagues looking at TB elimination worldwide. <clears throat> and here, once again, so if we, if we have, you, you can hardly even see the, the dark blue line here, which is treat active TB, right? So this is, again, essentially interrupting um, recent transmission still leaves us at a uh, hundredfold above the elimination threshold. And if we're going to get here worldwide, which as Knut has mentioned, is, is not even in the NTB strategy. Nobody's talking about eliminating TB worldwide by 2050. But to do that, once again, we would have to treat the entire, uh, essentially the equivalent of the entire US population every year for, uh, for latent TB and interrupt all active transmission. 
And then this this third um, paper was a manuscript put together by Philip Hill and colleagues looking at what if we did something just crazy, which is take the entire population of here, a small country, Kiribati, and, and treat everyone for active TB, so six months of therapy every five years, right? Um, and, and do that for 95% of the, uh, the population of this country. Um, and if you did that, right, um, you could reach elimination by, by 2025, um, just barely. So just to show how ambitious uh, an elimination agenda is, um, I think that, that models have been very helpful in, in doing this. But, but the bottom line here is, is not just about how difficult it is to achieve elimination, but the fact that if we are seeking to make progress toward elimination, we need to focus on prevention, right? And we need to be prepared to do so on, on a very large scale. Even though I think it sounds very nice to talk about preventing TB in certain select high-risk groups, right? those starting on TNF-alpha inhibitors who have uh, TB infection, uh, the foreign born with diabetes, uh, those in, in prisons, for example, things where, where most people would say, yes, of course, we should, we should be doing Populations are not responsible for 29 out of 30 cases uh, in, the, in the United States or other low incidence settings. If we're going to get to that level, we have to start thinking about treating everyone who is foreign born, for example, or treating all people with uh, any risk factor who have uh, evidence of, of TB infection, which means testing those people for TB infection. Um, so uh, again, to, to say that if, if this is what we're serious about doing, then we need to, um, we need to talk about how do we go about massively scaling up and then again, while I appreciate uh, you all asking me to talk about transmission models in this agenda, arguably it's, it's not talking about uh, what the prevention of transmission is not what's going to, to get us to elimination. Um, what we need to do, again, is talk about prevention of reactivation. Um, in addition, I think another challenge is the role of migration. So essentially that if we are going to eliminate TB in low incidence settings like the US, we, we have to achieve substantial, I would say, uh, tremendous progress on the, the global scale because the vast majority of TB incidents within the United States and other low incidence settings reflects infection that was acquired abroad. And that the migration, mixing of populations, actually creates TB transmission with so the proportion of recently transmitted cases in the US uh, that happen in, say, the, the homeless or in correctional facilities, those subpopulations, small populations, account for very recently transmitted cases. And it's difficult the way that, that people who are homeless only mix with other people who are homeless. People who are foreign born only mix with other people who are foreign born. If we want to understand these dynamics, we have to start thinking about collecting data on migration mixing patterns um, and thinking about how those impact TB transmission within our borders as a whole. Uh, and a particular challenge is that immigrants are not necessarily representative of the countries from which they come, right? So if, if you were to just take immigrants to the United States and model them as having the underlying TB incidence of the, the countries from which they came, the incidence in that first year is already lower than what we would expect if the people stayed in their own countries. And of course, this reflects certain practices like pre-immigration screening, the fact that people who can immigrate to the United States uh, or other low incidence settings have higher socioeconomic status, more, um, they're generally not as malnourished, et cetera. So, so they're not 
representative. But if we're looking at controlling TB in the United States, we have to be looking at controlling TB globally. But it's not clear exactly the relationship between those. If we reduce TB incidence in Mexico, for example, by 50%, will that reduce TB incidence in immigrants to the United States from Mexico by 50%? I'm not sure. Um, and and I'm, I think that's an, an open question. But just to say that mixing between hotspots and the general population is likely to be a, a critical driver of TB incidence. And, and on this, uh, in the upper right, I just have a, a slide looking at the relationship between um, mixing on the x-axis uh, and TB incidence um, in, the, in a kind of hot spot and a general population on the y-axis, just to say that, that there are these contours and, um, and that these both are major drivers of TB transmission in populations as a whole. And for low incidence countries like the US, the hot spot is often the rest of the world. Um, and so thinking about how mixing between those areas and the general population of, of low incidence countries and also between local hotspots, if you will, correctional facilities, homeless shelters, et cetera, and the rest of the population, how that works is going to be very important to figuring out the, the future of TB transmission in low incidence settings. And then finally, as TB epidemics start to come even into the pre-elimination phase, uh, it's harder to predict them, right? So if we had two outbreaks of three cases each um, in the entire state of Colorado, that would take Colorado above the elimination threshold for a year, right? So uh, it's, it's, it's hard to predict an outbreak of three cases. Um, and so we start to, to transition from um, what is the expected number of cases we might see to how do we prevent these outbreaks from occurring? Uh, and I think that that's sometimes a, a more difficult prospect because we often don't recognize where uh, TB outbreaks are going to occur until they do, and then we look retrospectively and say, well, of course, we had done a bad job of uh, contact investigations or treatment of TB infection in those settings, right? Um, it also becomes harder to, to justify resources uh, when we're talking about preventing outbreaks as opposed to cutting the number of cases overall. And the, the graphic here is just to show uh, the, this is TB incidents in, in New York City, right, in this blue line is the actual incidence, and you can see just how much um, uh, the, the outbreak of, of HIV, MDR-related uh, TB transmission contributed to the overall incidence of, of TB in New York City. Um, I, feel, uh, I feel compelled to end this with a discussion of, of how models are, uh, can be helpful uh, and might be less helpful in, in thinking about uh, promoting or helping us to understand the, the TB elimination agenda. And I think that what models are more helpful for is helping us to understand those dynamics. So how is TB likely to be different in the elimination phase as to currently? What are likely to be the key drivers of those epidemics in the future? How can we compare the, in, the impact of different interventions? How important are things like outbreaks, immigration, et cetera? Can we better understand recent transmission versus reactivation as contributors to TB incidents? If current trends continue, will TB incidents plateau or, or can we expect it to, co to, to continue to fall? Less helpful are, are questions that, that provide precise predictions about the future. So when exactly will we reach elimination in, in the US? If we cut TB funding by a certain amount of money, what, what can we expect the incidents to, uh, to do? If we implement a certain intervention, exactly how many cases will we avert? Where exactly is that next outbreak going to occur? How many cases of TB have we averted so far? What is our incidence going to be in 2030? These are questions that are obviously important but much more difficult for, uh, for models to, to project um, with precision. And what I, what I hope to impress upon you and would love to continue conversations with many of you after this 
is how do we think of TB modeling as an iterative process where we first go to public health practitioners and say what are the most important questions, right? Then come back to the modelers and the, and the modelers can say, well, so these are questions that we might be able to address. These are questions that we might not. How can we put something together communicate that back to the public health practitioners who then say, well, that's helpful to us in some ways, but here's how it could be more helpful, right? And that comes back to the modelers and they say, okay, well, let's, let's try to revise that. And, and by, um, by going through this, this iterative process with strong communication, people who understand the, how, how models work, but also the, the realities of TB control on the ground, um, Doing that over time in an iterative process is probably the only way that we're going to be able to use models effectively for TB control. Um, and so finally, just to summarize, um, TB elimination is a very ambitious goal. It means that we have to prevent 29 out of every 30 cases in the U.S. from, from occurring. Um, and modeling the elimination of TB is challenging because transmission becomes less important, because um, migration, mixing of populations becomes more important and because unpredictable outbreaks become more important as well. And, and hopefully what, uh, again, if, if you take one thing away from this is that if we're looking to use models to help us understand TB elimination, the way to do it is to foster communication and collaboration between people who understand on the ground realities and those who understand how to, to model these uh, transmission dynamics uh, with a longer term goal of, of understanding the epidemic better and thinking about how we can better eliminate or better um, craft a TB elimination agenda and, uh, and achieve it in the future. So, uh, so thanks and I look forward to, to taking questions.